Welcome to the VHS Files podcast. Today we're talking about David Gordon Green's Halloween Kills. Film stars Jamie Lee Curtis, James Jude Courtney, Judy Greer, Andy Matichek, Will Patton, and Anthony Michael Hall. David Gordon Green has brought us such films as George Washington, Pineapple Express, Your Highness, Prince Avalanche, Manglehorn, 2018 Halloween reboot slash sequel. The movie had a budget of $20 million and had a $50 million opening weekend, so looks like it's doing pretty well. If this is your first time listening to the VHS Files podcast or watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at VHS Files Podcast. Please, if you like this video, if you like this podcast, hit that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really helps us out. This episode contains heavy plot spoilers for Halloween Kills and the other Halloween films. So what did Jason and I think of Halloween Kills? Well, let's get to it. Enjoy the episode. All right, everybody. Josh and Jason here, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Halloween Kills. If this is your first time listening to us, you will need to know that Jason and I are huge Halloween fans. <laughs> Halloween is Jason's favorite movie of all time. It is my favorite slasher movie of all time. We're going to get right into it here and just kind of start breaking it down. So I want to start with, you know, it's obviously this is a continuation from the original 1978 movie. We had the 2018 that was the, you know, new timeline sequel that came out. Now, I kind of want to talk about our impressions of that one because that one goes right into this one. And so, I mean, I know I've got my opinions of it and you've got yours so go ahead and let me know what you, what you think of the 2018 version i had some good hopes i had some worries uh i don't know the whole thing with danny mcbride being part of the writing team mm -hmm. scares me uh some of it i think pushes the boundaries of what john carpenter probably would have done and because he was basically less is more yeah where in these movies more is more right <laughs> well i mean so. we, do, we do have to say i mean john carpenter and jamie lee curtis who are original to this franchise and to that movie i mean they've given their blessing to to this i mean yeah. we, we can't really say that happened with the rob zombie remake <laughs> so no i think he just gave him the okay to do it yeah and that and, was really and then rob zombie made basically uh trailer trash michael myers movie oh up here bitch i can't work yeah yeah so yeah down yeah it's horrible let's not talk about that that's bad memories yeah we're not here to talk about the rob zombie version we're here to talk about the david gordon green version <laughs> exactly so and i know we, uh, there's friends of that franchise of those two movies out there they love it and, but each to each their own yeah but but yeah i mean it had great aspects 2018 i mean i, I like the storyline uh love the soundtrack that uh john and his son did cody carpenter that's the other big plus to this is john carpenter oh. and his son came back and did the Dude. score for the for the 2018 and halloween kills and yeah they're amazing like i've been listening to them all week long yeah the, uh that's the one thing i noticed about the new movie uh it's a it's heavy I mean, it's, I mean, it's not even mm -hmm. like heavy, like in metal. I mean, we both love our metal music, but I mean, as in just instrumental music in the movie, uh, I mean, to me, it's heavy. I mean, yeah. it hits hard. It's very, it's a violent movie. So yeah. yeah. But uh, the whole twist with the doctor, Doctor, and that took me yeah. out of the movie Yeah, that to me kind of drug it way down. I mean, if it was riding at a solid eight out of 10, it drug it down to almost a three or four. Wow. with him that twist was horrible i mean I, I i like i said i believe i'd read that he kind of didn't really want to do the twist but it was a you know studio thing and whatever they kind of wanted it in there but uh and there's some aspects of halloween kills that i think they kind of inserted into there uh, almost the same thing i was into the movie and then things happened and it kind of took me out Okay. Yeah. Well, I want, I, I mean, I've, I've rewatched the 2018 version a few times. I, I do have to say that the 2018 version comes with a little bit of context for me because it came out when I, I was really looking forward to it. And it came out in a time where I was in a really bad place. Um, uh, a category five hurricane had just hit where I lived. Um, I stayed in my house during the hurricane and I won't go into all of that detail because this <laughs> isn't a therapy session, but, um, 
You it's know, always therapy, Josh, talking movies. Man. Right, right. That's why I do this. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was, but that was kind of the point. Like Halloween, Halloween 2018 was supposed to be my therapy. It was like, okay, if anything, I've got a new Halloween movie I can go see. So um, I remember distinctly rough day at work, just, be, you know, not just because my job was hard in itself, but because of everything that was going on due to the hurricane. Um, and I remember coming home and just being like, can we just go to the fucking movies? I just need to get away from life. Like it's, it, it will make me feel better. And unfortunately, like that wasn't the case because as you said, there are things that happen in the movie that made me go, why did they do that? Um, but that being said, I've watched it quite a few more times since then. I've watched it twice in preparation for Halloween Kills. I watched Halloween Kills, and then I watched 2018 again. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I will say, being as though there are things I don't like about the 2018 version, I will go ahead and say now that Halloween Kills makes Halloween 2018 better for me. Yeah. I, I feel it. like it corrects some of the issues that Halloween 2018 had. Um, and namely, uh, the the twist that you spoke of with Dr. Sartain, uh, that's the twist that a lot of people had problems with and thought it was really stupid and it came out of nowhere. But I think this movie kind of course corrects it a little bit. It makes it have a purpose in the 2018 movie. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, I can see where there's aspects of this new one that kind of help out with that. I don't know. I, I just called it lazy writing when I saw it. I'm like, oh, let's just make the doctor so obsessed with Michael Myers. I mean, because in a sense, Dr. Loomis was obsessed with Michael Myers. Right. For the right reasons. Dr. Sartain's, uh, yeah, he's he's in it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, we'll get to that in just a second. I mean, we even learn, you know, because at the at the end of the original 1978 movie, he falls out the window. That's all we knew. And then Halloween 2 of the mm -hmm. original uh came out and it's just him walking around and makes it to the hospital but we actually learned some stuff about what dr loomis really was going to make that decision of what he was going to do once they they catch michael we find this out in the yeah. new movie mm -hmm. we get a little backstory of to what really happened after he fell out the window in in this new timeline yeah and i'll say like this this had me roped in from the beginning of the movie we're obviously going to get into spoilers here. We give a spoiler warning at the beginning of this show, but we're going to go spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. We're going to go deep into this movie. So if you haven't seen it, go see it and come back and listen to what we say about it. But this flashback to 1978 is some of the best shit in this movie. In my oh, opinion. I love it. Oh, I thought it was fantastic. And, uh, and I spoke to you about this, like the day that I, wa I got around watching it because you watched it before me, uh, was the, the CGI of inserting, uh, Donald Pleasance's character into this opening right uh, 1978 sequence I mean because he passed away back when they made it or I think right before they made H2O yeah yeah uh, he was he'd already passed away but uh they did a great job I mean we've seen it in stuff like Star Wars where they've inserted characters who have mm -hmm. passed away and stuff like that they did a great job I mean because it's a zoom in close up and you really got to look for flaws in the CGI yeah there I mean, isn't really any I, I genuinely thought they got a lookalike actor when I first watched it um, because like, yeah, I mean, I, I was like, this dude looks just like Donald Pleasance, his voice, the, whoever they've got doing the voice doesn't sound exactly like Loomis or, or like Donald Pleasance, but it's close enough. Um, they should have had our buddy Nathan do it. He does a great Donald. Right. Pleasance. Nathan does a great Loomis. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's so great. If you want to listen to it, go back, listen to our Halloween uh, podcast. When we uh, did the first two, Nathan was, it was great. Yeah, it was a big that. highlight of those episodes for sure. Um, but I mean, it, Donald Pleasance aside, they actually got Michael Myers right in that flashback with the look <laughs> as well. Like we've had so many sequels and remakes and reiterations of Michael Myers over the past 40 years, they finally fucking got it right. Like the Michael in these flashbacks looks just like Michael from 1978. It's like, holy shit, they finally did it. We get to see Michael run. Well, I, I mean, mean, he doesn't walk. That is like swift freaking walking out of that closet and nails him against the wall to, to grab him. It was a very fast move on his part, but he kind of does the same thing to Bob in the original movie. He kind of yeah. comes out of that closet with some force and throws him up against a wall. And I kind of, kind of think it's around the same there, but yes, like I, the first time I watched it, I was like, Holy shit. He's moving. Dude. It was, I loved it. The, the look, the jumpsuit, the mask, 
everything and that whole scene because it's a good little bit of scene with officer hawkins uh and i can't remember that deputy's name and where these michael's got him in like a a hold so Mm -hmm. he can't get shot but i mean that whole sequence it looks fantastic i'm you know we're, we're we're getting into the meat of the movie here a little bit because this scene plays a part in our you know current timeline we've got hawkins thinking you know this is supposed to be his flashback because he's the officer who was there when they captured michael um i thought the whole thing with hawkins shooting his partner was a little unnecessary like why did he have to shoot his partner i mean he's scared shitless it's my fucking michael myers you right know, he's right. killed how many people that night so far i just think he was a new cop he shot him he i think he tried to shoot michael and he just hit his buddy in the neck yeah and i mean it was an it was an accident he didn't know what to do but at the given sequel the circumstances of going on okay do we do something to our officer who was trying to do the right thing or we, can we just pin this accidental death on just michael myers did it right right so, i'm just wondering if it's going to play into something in halloween ends uh with with um with all of that, him accidentally killing that cop. Cause I mean, it just seems I can understand the context that they're doing that for, but it almost seems like, you know, Michael could have just killed him. It's not like this guy had to shoot, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things that's a little problematic for me in all of this, but it's happening in the, in this, you know, flashback sequence that I'm just loving. I'm loving being back in 1978 Halloween. Oh yeah. I mean, Cause it's right after Loomis and, sh- and they're even talking about, Hey, he shot him six times. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's walking down that alley, which is the kind of the same shot we had from the original Halloween two mm-hmm. of him walking through back behind the houses and all that kind of stuff. And that was great. Cause I mean, Hawkins popped off a couple of shots. We obviously get kind of uh, a little precursor to that of how shitty of a shot <laughs> Hawkins is. Cause he yeah. missed Michael the first time. And then he misses him the second time. Right. I, that's like you said, uh, it, sucked me in because i wasn't expecting that this 1978 sequence i was expecting it to them to pick right up and it's kind of cool this whole movie really they didn't do like in a lot of the other movies like he's been dormant for three years because it's been three years since we had a halloween movie right Uh, no it's like the original halloween 2 it takes they just keep going it's all in 2018 Mm -hmm. when we jump forward back in time and they bring back characters from that 2018 version that kind of were sidelined in it like uh, the boyfriend uh cameron yeah uh, lonnie's son um all that shit went down with him and um the daughter uh the granddaughter um in the first movie and um you know the, the movie actually starts on him you know, making a phone call, trying to get hold of Oscar who walked her home in that movie. And we all know what happened there. And then, um, you know, he finds Hawkins on the ground and a lot of people presume that Hawkins was dead and that he wouldn't be back in this movie. Did, um, didn't Dr. Sir Kent, didn't he run him over with the car? Well, that was one thing. No, no, was, he stabbed him. I know he stabbed him in the neck, but I, I thought I, I'm like I said, I hadn't watched 2018 like you did. I, did he back up on him or did he just drive away? The shot in 2018 is a little confusing, and I think I kind of figured out what where they went with this. So yeah, Sartain stabs him, and mm-hmm. that's all we really see. We really we see him on the ground with a neck wound, and and then as he's driving the truck away, you see him kind of drive the truck over something, and where I guess we're to presume that it's Hawkins. Yeah. But it's right there on a curb in a oh, parking okay. lot. And yeah, I think he drove better. over the curb instead of driving over Hawkins. I mean, it's that that's an easy thing to say that that's, oh, that's what happened. But I, I would assume that's the where the, yeah. the screenwriters and everything went with this is, oh, he didn't actually run over him. He ran over the curb. Yeah, just like, okay, did we actually kill Hawkins or can we use him? Right. <laughs> and, and, and our buddies over at the Silver Linings playlist, they just did uh, they just did an episode on the 2018 Halloween, and all of them presumed that Hawkins was dead. They didn't think he was going to be coming back. They knew that somebody was going to be cast as him in the flashback scenes, but they presumed he was dead, which I think a lot of people did. Yeah, I mean, that's what I thought. I mean, like you said, if you go back and watch 2018, when he drives away, you do see the vehicle. That's what I was thinking. I was like, did yeah. he actually run him over or not? Right. So. But you mentioned, I mean, we've talked about how this goes straight from 2018 into the into this one. And, you know, it's not the first time they've done this. They did this in Halloween uh, Part 2 back in 1981. And I will say one thing about these movies is 
Much like Rob Zombies, they're pulling segments from every one of the sequels that have come before it. In the, in the 2018 version, we had the public bathroom murder scene, which we've seen in Halloween H2O. There wasn't a murder in that one, but there was a whole scene in a public bathroom. Same thing in the Rob Zombie, uh, the first Rob Zombie movie. Yeah. Uh, you've got your angry mob of people, which comes in part four, and this happens in this movie. The party in 2018, which with the high school kids and everything, reminds me of some shit you would have saw in the Rob Zombie movies. There are a lot yeah. of things they pull from those movies and kind of use within this. Yeah. And that's fine. A lot of it doesn't really bother me. Um, one thing I will say that a lot of people are bitching about is how gory this movie is. And let's just let's not even let's not even make any bones about it. This movie is fucking gory. Dude, it's uh, that's kind of what I was saying. They believed in uh, more is more, yeah. Because, dude, they're the brutality, and it's that's where I say I at some part I got taken him because Michael was like he was almost methodical and thought about how he killed people, and then he did his little booby traps where he would put the bodies in certain areas mm -hmm. to scare you, yep. like a child would. The utter visceral killing of the like the firefighters when he gets loose, mm -hmm. dude. He's walking out, and he's like, oh. Let's see all you fuckers. I'm about to fuck you all up right it's now. I mean, he's even carrying that axe like he's like, let's go. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> let's him, do this. Him on that porch looking out at those firefighters is the equivalent of like the Terminator. I can just see Michael having Terminator vision and it goes to that red over screen beep, and he's just beep, like, beep, 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 beep. I got to take all these motherfuckers out. And I want to talk about that shot. That shot when he walks out of the fire mm -hmm. is that's a phenomenal just just shot. Of yeah. him standing there on that porch while it's burning down. And I was, I was honestly, like, I was honestly a little worried with the burning stuff. Um, another callback to part the original part two, mm -hmm. um, and I was also scared with the whole like burnt half burnt mass thing because I thought yeah. that was a that was a lot of reminiscence of Halloween two Rob Zombie Halloween two yeah. of the mask being all tore up. But I think it works in this movie now. Now seeing it. Just the little bit of burn on the one side and how the hair has been a little melted and all that stuff. Yeah. I think it actually looks good. Um, I want to go ahead and put my card on the table right now. James Jude Courtney is a fucking phenomenal Michael Myers. Dude, he does. He's, he does great. Well, even uh, they had a, a younger guy. He's a stunt guy. Do the 1978 stuff. They had three Michael Myers in this because they even mm -hmm. brought uh, Nick Castle back. Right. For uh, a few shots. Yeah. But, uh, dude, he does a great job as Michael. And it's just the emotion in the body mm -hmm. the, the head movements yep. uh stuff like that you feel it i mean because it's an emotionless mask i mean there's nothing there and you got to have somebody uh i think it was even like kane hodder when he did jason mm -hmm. he brought emotion to jason's character in right. those movies yep uh and that's the thing that a lot of other people didn't do and i i think nick castle and everybody else who's played michael myers just did a great job but this guy he sells it dude yeah. he because that's what i'm feeling when he gets out of there he's like this bitch locked me in a fucking basement to burn me. Mm -hmm. I'm out. I'm pissed. That's yeah. what you get for the rest of the movie is almost just like, I'm going to come and kill you and I'm going to kill everybody in the way. Yep. And dude, he is just so angry. I feel the anger of him walking out. Right. And I was, whew, those and that, kills are crazy. That's what I want to get to with it when it comes to Michael in this, which I've heard a lot of people complaining about is how violent he is and how gory this movie is and how the 1978 Halloween was very reserved. There was not hardly any blood in that movie. Michael didn't need to be gory to be scary. I don't think that's the point here, as Buster Rhymes says. In the Michael Myers is a killer shark. He's baggy-ass overalls. He is out for fucking blood. And, you know... I've been one of the first ones to complain about Rob Zombie's movies and how they made Michael this, you know, he's doing all these gory kills and all this stuff. But what I don't like about what they did in the Rob Zombie movies is they, they gave Michael purpose. They, they, they gave him this shitty like childhood. They gave him all these terrible people in his life and they based Michael on all of that garbage. Yeah, he's a product of a bad home. Right. A he, bad upbringing. And that's horrible. It was better uh, him growing up in a middle-class neighborhood 
who just said, fuck it, I'm going to kill my little sister for shits and giggles. And that's it's another Halloween. thing I love about this flashback scene when they're talking in the alleyway. And, and, and he asked him, he's like, he's or the, the one cop says, I used to play with Michael. My mom used to send me over to play with him when I was a kid. And he was like, well, did he used to tear the wings off butterflies? And he was like, nope. He was just a normal kid from what I saw. He used to stare out his window a lot. Like, what I like about these movies in this timeline that we've got now is we have opportunities to explain Michael and what he does in, in a couple of instances. You've mm -hmm. also got the whole thing in the first movie where they're like, oh, isn't your, isn't your grandma his sister? And Wasn't it her brother who, like, cold-blooded murdered all those teenagers? No. That's just a bit that some people made up to make him feel better, I think. They are course correcting that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it would have been very easy for them to say, oh, yeah, I mean, when I was playing with Michael when I was a kid, I, he, he was just weird. No, this guy says, no, he seemed like a normal kid. And yeah, then he and just snapped. I, and I did like that little, like, kind of breaking it down into a, a psychological thing. Was he staring out at the town or was he looking at his reflection in the glass, looking yeah. back at himself? Yeah. And something because he knew something was wrong, like there was something inside of him that was broken or right. something and but he never told him like he said he played with him like he was a regular kid right but when they said that little line in the movie i was like whoa that's mm -hmm. pretty deep but like was he looking at the town of how what he thought about haddonfield or was he just looking back at his self right and uh, and uh, you know the other thing about rob zombies movies compared to these movies is you know they're doing it right here even though these movies are putting a lot more gore in from what the original had it, it makes sense here to me, even though there's not all that background for Michael, like, yeah, he is just on a murderous rampage and it's like, okay, well, we're going to show you the, we're going to show you the murderous rampage. We're not going to cut away from it. I'll think and, you get to see every bit of it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this movie, if you want gore, this movie fucking brings it hard. <laughs> I mean, it may not be like a uh, Hellraiser level, but for a Halloween movie, this thing brings the gore. Um, one thing I was confused about in seeing the trailers and how Michael got out of this fire in the basement, you know, I was just kind of under the assumption that he's just standing in the middle of this fire while it's happening and waiting on something, somebody to come, or he's just going to burn to death. But I didn't notice until my third watch of this, I've watched it three times. Um, he's behind that fucking door where Lori stored all of her guns. Did you notice that? Because when the firefighters get in there and the one falls into the basement, yeah. Michael's nowhere to be found. And then all of a sudden, like you see a shot, it's, it's, it's hard to catch it. Like I said, I, I caught it on my third watch. Um, it pans over and you see there's like a garage looking door that she had all of her guns behind. Yeah. And he, that, that comes up and he comes out of there. So uh, not, not only is Michael fucking on a rampage in this one, he, he, he it, it, we're, we're showing, Oh, he's smart. Like he knows what he needs to do to get out of these situations. Yeah, he's just not your dumb killer. He's not like a zombie, deadite, whatever you want to call it. I mean, he's got, right. like I said, he's got purpose in this movie, and he knows what he wants done. And uh, Laurie Strode, Jamie Lee Curtis's character, kind of screwed it up for him. And now the firefighters are unfortunately the first people who meet him, and he's pissed. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, that's probably some of the bloodiest shots of the movie is when he turns that uh, saw back around on that one firefighter and just cuts him up like freaking – Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm -hmm. style. There's a little bit of that there. But, uh, I mean, past that, I mean, there's a scene where he meets the one couple, which I think is a callback to Halloween 2, 1981, when he goes to that house, uh -huh. and it's the couple. Remember? Because that's how it was in part two, where he steals the knife, and, you know, they're in there watching TV, but he just he doesn't kill them. He just walks away. Right. But that, the way he kills them, and then the shot from across the room, where the wife is watching and he is just steadily putting every kitchen knife yeah. into her husband. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, Whoa. there's one thing that bothers me about that scene. And in 2018, he got two of his fingers blown off. Uh, he was yeah. reach, reaching through the door and they and, still and, have it. And they, they still have it. But the he, continuity is there. <laughs> well, that's one thing I'm about to get to is the continuity in this movie is, is, fantastic it's a hundred percent um and so yeah i mean he's he got those fingers blown off and the reason he's in this house and the reason he's in that bathroom is because he bandages his hand up mm -hmm. if you notice when he leaves there he he wraps his hand up 
I like that's one thing if you want to talk about Michael Myers, like he I don't I've never gotten that Michael would be the kind of whatever to bandage himself up. Well, I mean like he's been said, shot he's smart. I mean, he's been shot six times. He's been stabbed. He's got shot in the fucking face in the last one. But, like, he bandages his hand up. I I just find it weird that Michael decided to do that. It's a little weird to me. I don't know, mate. He was just like, God, it's really hard to stab people with this hand. It's kind of burning when I pick up a knife. (laughs) I got this bone. My pinky bone's kind of sticking out a little bit over here. Let's go ahead and wrap that up. But it is cool when you see him bust through the glass to grab the husband. You mm-hmm. can see the bandages on his hand, right? And it, they, the fingers are still missing because you know, little things like that do get missed in sequels, right? Quite and a that, bit. And that's what I've got to say. Like they get a a grade A for effort in this movie as far as continuity goes, because the all the way down to the costumes and the little things like that. Like this movie looks like they just continued to film nothing. Like it just looks exactly like everything else looked in that movie. The characters look the same. The town looks the same. I have to give it major props for all of that because they are really sticking to the continuity here. We got our returning characters from 2018, but we also get our characters back, more of them from 1978, where we mm-hmm. get Lindsay Wallace and Tommy Doyle as grownups. Uh-huh. Back and uh Marion Chambers. I always I always thought she was a nurse, but they just call her Marion. I, I always call her nurse chambers. She was, she's a nurse. I mean, they, yeah. they do mention that she's a nurse in there. And, and another thing with the continuity here is the, the black couple that, that are dressed up as the nurse and the doctor, they're from the 2018 movie too. When Michael yeah. first walks out on the sidewalk and he, you get that great tracking shot of him going through the neighborhood, killing people, you can, you can see this couple getting in their car and getting ready to go somewhere. And the one guy says, Oh, I forgot my stethoscope. I got to go in and get it. That's yeah. the couple that's in this yep. movie. And I thought that was fucking brilliant they to were bring, trying to pay attention to the detail. For yeah. Sure. To, to bring that, to bring those people back into this movie was so smart for me. We get our recast for Tommy here in Michael Anthony hall. And, um, I'm going to go ahead and say it. He's the worst part of this movie for me. Yes, we agree. We do share a brain. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I love Tommy in the first movie. I think he's a great kid. I mean, obviously he's got some, you know, he's playing around and fucking with people and getting picked on and stuff in that movie. But in this, I don't know, maybe it's Michael Anthony Hall's performance. Um, I don't know what it is, but I fucking hate Tommy in this movie. Dude, the, you, at the very beginning, when he stands up and he does his little thing at the bar, when we're getting the introduction to the three of them, mm-hmm. uh, there, cause I mean, nurse chambers, Lindsay and, uh, Tommy are all there at the bar together and they're everybody's and Lonnie, doing their... and, and Lonnie from and the first Lonnie. movie who, who yeah. they, they interject into this one. Like we don't know anything about Lonnie other than he's an, a kid who picked on Tommy and that's his name from the first movie. That's really no, all we I, get from him. No, no. Lonnie's the one that walked up to the house that Donald Pleasant's made fun of. True. True. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, but, and but there's not a lot of substance yeah. to Lonnie in the first movie. Is what and I'm I saying. do liked it when they did the 1978 flashback, that part where he falls down on the sidewalk mm-hmm. and Michael actually walks up to him and doesn't kill him. Right. And you're like, okay, are we getting the whole Jason thing where Jason doesn't kill kids? Well, that's this, isn't that the second run in that day he has with him? Because isn't Lonnie the one that he stops at the school? I think when, so. when they're running away from Tommy, he stops that kid and the kid looks up at him and then runs off. Isn't that Lonnie too? Oh my God, dude, you gotta make me. I gotta go back now. I think so. Lonnie's the kid that walks up, and Dr. Loomis is behind the bush and he does this. Chicken, go ahead, Lonnie. Go in. Hey, hey, Lonnie, get your ass away from there. I like our pictures, Nathan and Mike doing. doing that line. <laughs> that's where he came from but yeah they all get up there and they do their little spiel and i thought that was kind of cool but i like tommy there and he's explaining them all that we are the survivors of the asshole killer blah 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 blah. that right there is cool now as it goes on god overacting yeah way too much uh the whole evil dies tonight shit is is my part of the movie that is the doctor from 2018 Evil dies tonight. Evil dies tonight. Evil. 
that that brings me to one of my biggest bads of this movie is the dialogue in this movie is is atrocious. Um, nobody, nobody. I don't even care if it was this situation that they're in with this guy t- terrorizing their town. Nobody is running around going, "Evil dies tonight." Like it, it is so, it is so forced, and it is very stupid. This ends when Michael is dead. Michael Myers will be executed tonight, and it will not go without witness. Evil dies tonight. I'm gonna fucking kill him. Evil dies tonight. Dude, that the, the stupid baseball bat, the old Huckleberry or whatever the hell it's called, Dingleberry. Yeah, yeah like I don't know why that needs a backstory. Just give the dude a fucking baseball bat and let him go. Yeah, I was just like, that is my doctor moment of yeah. this movie is Tommy's character as they give him more and more lines. Mm-hmm. And then the whole riot thing he instigates uh, yep. later in the movie, because it's just, that's where I started to getting taken out, taken out of the movie. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, that's where it's bringing me down because I mean, there's even some bad acting by Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie. Yeah. Some dialogue she has her character, not very good. I, I think her daughter and allison do better than she does she obviously has to take a sideline in this one because she was injured in the last one that's another thing i kind of have a little bit of issue with on this one is they go through the trouble of showing us her going into surgery in this Mm -hmm. movie being operated on and then she's up walking around like you know they make it seem like she's in pain and she's having trouble getting around but still like if if they cut into you and did the surgery that they are depicting in this movie she's not fucking getting up and walking around like that's some major surgery they were doing to her on that scene. Yeah, so, I mean they got her opened up like trying to uh, sew up internal organs and yeah stuff. Like and that. and the worst the worst performance out of Jamie in this movie is when she does find out that Michael is still alive, and she gets that syringe of morphine or whatever it is, and she's like, it makes the pain go away, and then she ah, she sticks herself and screams and shit like, it's so overdone, dude. Like. It's it's pretty bad. Come on, Jamie. We love you. Yeah. You could have done better. So. Um, so I mean I I'll continue with a few of my my bads here because I've kind of got a few things in some categories. Yeah, like, we've talked about some of the good brutal scenes, and there are plenty more in this movie. If yeah. you're in, like Josh said, if you want to see some brutal killing, you just gotta stay to the very end. Yeah, and there <laughs> so. well, there's some more there's some more good that I'm gonna get to, but I'll go ahead and get some the majority of my bad stuff out there. Um, you know, well, I've already t- talked about the majority of it. Michael Anthony Hall, I think is a terrible character in this movie. Nobody talks like the people talk in this movie. Uh, the handing out the handguns in the parking lot of the, of the hospital. Like, like oh. this, it, it, it's so stupid, dude. Like you don't do that shit out in the open. Like I don't, I don't mind them doing it, but have them off in a park somewhere doing it. Don't have it right there in the center of everything that's going on. That's just stupid. But this is the Midwest. People have guns. Yeah. They have their own, uh, rifles and shotguns. I, I guarantee you, they at least have one or two gun racks in a house. Mm-hmm. The police in this town are horrible. Well, that's, I mean, they try, <laughs> they try to, yeah to correct some of that and that cop coming in and saying, Oh, uh, we don't have enough people to handle this and we've got to have people come from the state or whatever. Um, but the hospital stuff in this, in this movie is, is really the worst. Um, this is when you get the worst coming out of Tommy. You got everybody thinking that Michael is coming there for Lori when in reality he's not. Yeah. The, um, and they think that the other, cause remember we had a whole bus of, uh, people from the uh, Smith's Grove get loose. Mm -hmm. So, and then they think the one that's running around the hospital is Michael Myers. Yeah. They have this whole bait and switch with this other escapee in this movie that, you know, I like the idea of that. I like the idea of, okay, these guys escaped and any, either one of them could be Michael. Um, The only thing that really gets me on that is you've got Tommy leading this lynch mob to go after this guy. Tommy has fucking seen Michael Myers. Tommy knows that Michael is a tall, lanky, you know, uh, a force of nature. And like, it's obvious that this guy who ends up at the hospital, this other escapee resembles Michael in no way whatsoever. No, he's a, (laughs) he's a short chubby guy. 
running around and i you almost feel sorry for the guy i do i, I think Dude. that's the point is like he just wanted somebody to uh, fix his head yeah because it's cut open probably from the uh bus wreck and 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 they start his whole story with him stealing the car that's that the couple the nurse and the doctor yeah. couple are driving and and the idea of a bait and switch works for me it's just it wasn't executed well here i don't like the fact that everybody's going after this guy when you've got people who blatantly know what michael looks like and they're still like going crazy to go after him it's not good and like i said i do feel sorry when the guy jumps out the window now you talk about a gory fucking scene yeah him on the ground the aftermath they, of that is pretty fucking fucked up <laughs> we get brains and an arm that has like been yeah. severed from where yeah, they because it shows him hit his he puts his arm down yeah and then that arm is laying over here <laughs> i love i love that pov shot of him falling out of the window too like you see his arms in the in the shot and whatnot like i love the way that looks that's like a pretty good shot yeah. yeah there's good things about all of all of this stuff they're doing here at the hospital but ultimately like you 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 add this lynch mob in and you add tommy being a fucking dickwad like it just it starts to fall apart for me. It, it could have it could have worked better, but I think it wasn't executed very well. All right. Well, now you said a lot of th some bad things. You maybe have some more. Well, I want to get back to a positive thing. Yeah. And when and you kind of touched on it earlier with the callbacks to older movies. Mm -hmm. And they have the kids on the swing set, which is cool. And I love how they're swinging there. And they go, oh, is this some creepy guy in a white mask walking around playing hide and seek? He's uh -huh. over here and he's gone. And then he's over here and he's gone. And then you look and then you see him and he's holding one of the old Halloween three masks in his hand. Yep. Uh, and I thought that was cool. And then we get more of that. Uh, man, you get a lot of Halloween three masks, even in the 2018 and in this movie. Yeah. You got a couple of kids wearing them in the first one, and then in this one, all three of them right there. Like, all three of those kids have those masks. Yeah, and uh, I thought that was pretty cool. But I even like the callback to where they're in the car, and Michael gets on top of the car. Yep. Just like in the very beginning of Halloween 1978, and he smashes the window with his hand mm -hmm. with uh, nurse chambers in the car, just like 1978. So I was like, that was cool as shit. It did suck that he actually killed her. Yeah. I was like, damn, that's, that's one thing I will have. It's in my good category is I really felt the weight of some of the deaths in this movie. Um, yeah. I was genuinely sad when some people die in this movie. Um, unfortunately, Tommy's not one of them. <laughs> no, just if you are listening and spoiler alert, that motherfucker dies. And I was actually, I almost gave a fist bump yeah. in the air. Like, Oh, yes thank you michael <laughs> he will not be in halloween ends unless you know it is the movies yeah. he could have survived yeah we don't know hawkins we thought hawkins was dead so uh oh god and that's I gonna just... that's gonna get to my discussion about the very end of this movie which we'll get to in a little bit but I kind of have some concerns there, but I was really upset to see Marion Chambers die. I thought they were going to take Lindsay out, but unfortunately, but fortunately she, she survives it. Um, my fist bump fist in the air moment for this, when she runs up to Michael and fucking smashes him in the face with that sack of bricks, I was like, fuck yeah, baby, get his ass. <laughs> like I was, I was in it at that point. Um, it's, it's almost kind of like, like she's uh, again, you know, that they're, they got some PTSD. Oh, her yeah. and Tommy probably For both sure. do from, you know, they had a, a, a freaking mass killer try to kill them and their babysitter and everything like that. But it's just cool that she had the wits about her to pick up the bag mm -hmm. and fill it full of those bricks. And when we get back over there now, back to the vehicle, the death of the, the husband, it was anticlimactic to me uh, <laughs> in the back seat where he's like stabbed him right through the eye. I, I still think the kill is cool, though. I like the that knife through the eye. Now, lazy writing, I'm going to kick a door and make the woman shoot herself in the face. <laughs> that kind of came out of nowhere for me. I was a I little was surprised like, by it. I'm like, okay, is this a Quentin Tarantino movie now? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're just going to make people kill like themselves with here i'm just gonna kick this door i mean that's a huge ass gun i don't know was it like a 44 45 that's a fucking de like, like that's like desert, desert eagle, eagle. Man. <laughs> yeah dude i mean and i mean and she's she's a sucky shot yeah and that was that's why i said that's one of those like 
hey, how are we going to kill her? What's a cool way? Hey, how about she just he kicks the door and he hits the gun and she shoots herself? Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's move on to the next scene. But part of it's a little. I mean, I I kind of like it because it's a little realistic. I mean, you start you start that scene with them in the back seat with the guns and the husband is like, oh, I don't. I've never shot a gun before. And she's like, well, I have. So she takes the gun. So like, you're getting you're getting some realism in there, whereas. Not everybody has shot a gun. Not everybody knows oh. how to handle themselves with a gun. And then her getting taken out the way she does kind of is the is the answer to that. Also, some of the, the bad parts of that are writing is, all right, we got busted out windows. Let's lock the doors. Yeah. I think that's intentional, though. I think that's supposed to be a hit for comedy. Yeah. Um, which brings me to my other downside for this movie. I love the characters. I love the characters that are living in Michael's house now. Oh, Little and Big John. Big John and Little John. I like them, like, have them in the movie, fine. But the fact that their names are Big John and Little John is so fucking stupid. Yeah, and they're gay, they're a gay couple. They're Which, married. Fine, and, doesn't bother yeah, me whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, that's a big deal. But they play too much on that, and I think that's kind of the name play. It's like a, a pseudo-sexual type thing. Big John, Little yeah. John. You yeah. know, and I'm like, okay, I just, it, I, I can't, that's another part. I mean, they were cool characters. Like you said, the naming of the characters, give them an actual fucking yeah. name in this movie. Let them ha- play a role. Not just like we got big John and little John. It's some kind of cool name for a gay couple. I'm like, no, that's, I think it's horrible naming you, for you, them. You got them calling, calling out big John and little John through the whole movie. And I'm just going, Robin Hood and Little John walking yeah, through the forest. The forest. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, all I'm God. thinking whenever they're happening. But like, I love that they're taunting the kids. I love that they 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 like the fact that they live in Michael Myers' old house. Like them as characters, I like, and I it's like I'm glad exactly. they're in the movie. But their names are just so stupid that it's just like you could have yeah. done something different. Here. I don't. That's why. I, I don't know. I mean. I don't know. That's where I think they were kind of making fun of them because they were a gay couple. They gave them a horrible name. Yeah. And I was like, no, these people, uh, they both did a great job in the movie. I liked them both, but just give them a real character name and not just play joke names because they're a gay couple or something. That's just horrible. I mean, the fact that they're including that kind of stuff in these movies, I'm, I'm all for, I'm championing like, yeah, that's freaking awesome. Even the scene in the first movie where you got the dad and the kid that find the bus once it's wrecked and you got the, you know, the kids like, I'll go hunting with you on the weekends, but I'm missing fucking dance class for you right now. Like, I love that they're playing with those, you know, stereotypes and like changing that shit up. Like, yeah, I'm a kid. I'm going out to hunt with my dad, but I want to go fucking dance when I'm ready. You know, like, that's my thing. Like, I love that they're doing shit like that. But like, yeah, give them competent names like Big John and Little John is just again lazy writing and i i think it was i i thought it was a little insensitive by their naming yeah so i don't know i thought it could have done better but yeah they're and then it's funny and a friend of mine that i talked to about this movie said did you even notice that big john picks up the little knife and little john picks up the big knife yeah yeah <laughs> i was like okay danny mcbride wrote this part ultimately with the end of this movie like I love that they set up this character of Lori who's been traumatized by this her whole life and has spent her whole life preparing for if Michael, when Michael ever comes back, I'm going to be ready for him. And she's making it all about her when it really isn't. It's easy to see it that way. And that's one of the things about the Dr. Sartain stuff from the first movie is it's his obsession with Mm -hmm. Michael and Lori. Yes. Lori has an obsession with Michael. Ultimately, Michael does not give a flying fuck who who he's killing. No, he is just killing people. And that's where they're trying to get away from the, uh, like they said, when they did these movies, they got rid of the whole thing. Lori's his uh, sister and all that kind of stuff. Uh It goes back to, you just happen to be home. Yeah. You, You, I came back to my hometown you were babysitting. Yeah, you you came to my house and dropped off an envelope. I saw you. I'm gonna follow you now. Follow you around yeah. and kill you. Yeah, his obsession at that point is like, you came to my house. Why are you at my house? I'm going to follow. You. Like you said, I'm gonna kill you. And that's where you can say it all starts right there. Yeah. Is the fact that he saw her on the front porch of the very first movie. Yep. And that became his obsession because in his mind he's not right. He he's basically walking evil. Yep. And then they kind of get into. 
<sighs> where they kind of bring Michael into some of the old movie that he's not human. Right. Because now, like, Laurie's talking is that the more he kills, basically, the stronger he gets, the more yep. evil he consumes and stuff like that. And, see, Loomis has shot him six times, and then he went to, and he was obviously in uh, Swiss Grove for all those years. Uh, he gets out, he's been shot, he's been stabbed, he's been burned. There's a part of this movie where they shoot him several times in the middle of the street, uh -huh. beating him to a pulp. He still gets up. Yep. He is no longer at this time human in my mind. Yep. And 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 where they're gonna go with that in Halloween ends, I have no idea. I'm I will I will be surprised by that whenever it comes. It seems like they're setting it up for something like that, that it's going to be supernatural. And you got a lot of people online complaining about when did, when was Michael ever supernatural? Like he's always been that way. Like uh, he ever says part four, like, oh, well, no, I mean, even in the part one, like he got shot six times and he got up and fucking walked away. People don't do that. Yeah. But then they can also play it up to like, ah, uh, well maybe he didn't shoot him in vital or, I mean, you got so much crap, but yeah. The fact later, you know, he gets into he has the curse of thorn and he must kill all the people in his family bloodline in order to be at peace and blah, yeah. blah, blah. I'm so. I'm totally fine with abandoning all of that. I like I like where they're going with this. Um, but going back to ultimately what's happening with Lori here is she spent all this time. She spent her entire life preparing for this moment and being prepared. And ultimately, it didn't help. Like, nope. In the end, spoiler alert, she loses her daughter to Michael because she is obsessed with Michael. Yep. And her, that obsession has carried on to her her family bloodline. Yeah. Her her obsession with Michael ultimately got her daughter killed. Um and that's really where I felt like I said I felt the weight of the deaths in this movie like at the end of this movie Judy Greer, she baits Michael and gets him to the center of this angry mob who goes to beat him down. And then, as you said, like they shoot him, they stab him, they beat the shit out of him with sticks and baseball bats and he still gets up. And then the last shot of the movie is Michael killing her. Yeah. She even shows a knife through his back. Yeah. As she's there in the street with the, the angry mob and mm -hmm. walks away. And what does she do? She walks back to the Michael Myers house, walks right up to the room and stands right where Michael, they, like I said, again, they have made that comment through the whole movie. This is where Michael stood yep. and looked out the window and that officer died standing in that same place. Uh, was it little John was in that room, I believe. Uh -huh. And he died there too. And then she goes, you know, what's going to happen as soon as she walks in that room. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, earlier we get the, the cut back to the whole scene where Lori's talking about, you can't kill him with brute force and blah, blah, blah. And as soon as she says that, the supposedly dead Michael Myers on the ground mm -hmm. wakes up, kills good old Sheriff Brackett. Yep. He, he old man Sheriff Brackett. They brought him back from the original 1978 movie. He yep. was the, I think he worked as a, a security guard in the hospital. Yep. Because our point. first <laughs> shot of him, he sees Lori come into the hospital. Yeah. Because he's retired. You know, mm -hmm. he's working at the hospital. Uh, and it's cool they brought him back to, and uh, he kills him because he's walking up to shoot him, yep. and he doesn't. Uh, but and he kills everybody. And then, like you said, we get the fun death of Tommy. The most, the best death of the whole movie <laughs> is the fact that Tommy dies. And um, I know it sucks. And you, young Tommy, I mean, I felt bad for him. He got picked on and almost got killed by Michael when he was a kid, but. With all the bullshit he did in this movie and the horrible acting by Michael Anthony Hall, yeah, I was glad he died. Yeah, they do a great job of making us not like his character in this movie. And it's sad because, you know, I, I do like Tommy in the original, but, you know, it's been 50 years for him, basically. I mean, he's uh, he's probably 50 in this movie or, or something like that. And, like, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. over, over time, like, again, this town has this obsession with Michael Myers, or at least some of the town has an obsession with Michael Myers, mainly the people who had to live through that that travesty in 1978 um and i think what they're getting at with the end of this movie and i and the story they're going into is the more he kills the more he transcends and all that it's like he's only as dangerous as we make him out to be mm -hmm. because ultimately if dr sartain or let we'll go all the way back to the beginning of the uh the podcasters at the beginning of to 2018 um 
if they didn't have this obsession with wanting to to research Michael, um, he would have never got out. The mask would have never been an, a thing to trigger Michael because they're they're show you know they're depicting the fact that the mask triggers him in these movies. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have triggered Michael at that point. Doctor Sartain's obsession with Michael gets him to the point where he's breaking him out of out of the hospital. And then taking him to Lori, Lori's obsession with him has gotten her family killed. The town's obsession with Michael has gotten a lot of them killed. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, I'm not saying that Michael shouldn't be. Uh, that's the thing. Like, it's weird. It's, it's almost like they're saying if you don't talk about Michael, if you don't acknowledge that he's there, then he doesn't matter. It's what we make him is why he's so big and bad. Okay, you just said that, and I automatically had flashbacks to uh, Jason versus Freddy. Of the reason Freddy is right. there anymore is because he's been forgotten. He has no power. Right. So when you just said that, I was like, "Please say they're not going down that road." <laughs> so I'm, so. <laughs> I'm wondering if they're going to do something to that effect because I have seen an interview with David Gordon Green, and they were talking about how the how the series will wrap up. And he said, with Halloween ends, we're going to end up doing a four, a four year time jump. Yeah. Which will put it in present day. Cause you know, this one still takes place in 2018. So if we, yeah. if we jump four years, that just puts it in present day, but still that's a, a time jump for our characters. And I'm wondering like, after all of this goes down is Michael, like, you know, is he going to be forgotten? And in Lori's obsession is going to be what brings him back for the final battle. Like, it's it's it poses a lot of questions, but I, I do like I do like that they're putting that out there that Michael is only a threat if we make him a threat. I kind of like that idea. Yeah, because I mean, like you said, it's just one person's obsession leads to another person's obsession. It's, mm -hmm. it's basically it's all about obsession of with Michael. It's actually Sheriff Brackett. Yeah. It's 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 after they after the guy jumps out the window, he's like, it's not him, Tommy. <laughs> and uh, yeah. he's like, look at what he's done to us. You know, he, he's he's turned us into monsters. He's he's Michael's done exactly what he wanted to do. Right. To cause mayhem. Yep. He, he that's all it is. It's Halloween. That's yep. all he's trying to do. Poked out eyeballs with thumbs. Oh, that's a killing death. I, 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 dude, that's an awesome death with the freaking thumbs into the eye sockets. That's a good one. Yep. Oh, yeah. They get a lot of uh, that. I mean, yeah, this I've kind of just kind of I mean, I know we get Halloween ends. I think it comes out next year. It does. Yep. Yeah. And we get because I believe they shot them simultaneously. Like they trying to try to knock them out really quick. But uh, I'm kind of looking forward to see how this ends up. And I've even heard it uh, and heard audio and read things about they said they might carry these on even after halloween ends well I, it wouldn't surprise me i mean uh, just seeing that this has had a good weekend i think it had like a 50 million dollar weekend yeah um, i wrote that down i think it had like a what is it 20 million dollar budget and it already made 50 on its yeah. opening weekend 50.4 actually set the uh record for the highest horror pandemic opening and that's saying something also considering that it was released on peacock you know, you you yeah. did not have to go to the theater to see this movie. You should go to the theater to see this movie. And, so, and I do want to talk, uh, touch on the thing about Hawkins. He takes the blame for everything yeah. that has transpired since there, because uh, I'd mentioned at the beginning of the this episode that uh, things could have turned out differently. Yep. But Hawkins is a good man. Right. I mean, that's why it happens, even though Michael is obviously bad. And I'm kind of wondering how, like you said, maybe that's going to tie in. Maybe it's going to be more about Hawkins than Lori. You never know. Because in the flashback scene, they we find out that they surrounded Michael because obviously in 2018 he had been captured Yeah, because he's at the asylum. But they catch him, and he's there. And, I mean, they start beating him down, and they're going to shoot him. And Loomis is about to pop a cap in his head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Hawkins actually steps in and knocks the gun away. So yep. Loomis does not kill Michael. Right. And, and he was it uh, Hawkins said there in hospital is that all I could think is that that's somebody's son yeah. in that mask. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, and he's taken on that. If I would have just let him shoot him. Yeah. None of this would have happened. Yep. And that, and, and that was one thing I wanted to bring up when we talk about the flashback stuff is, you know, that was a big problem a lot of people had with 2018 Halloween was 
they didn't didn't do anything to explain how Michael was caught because you know he's just in Smith's Grove in the beginning of that movie. Mm -hmm. They never went into detail about how he was captured, and that's where you get this entire back you know uh, flashback scene in this movie is they they show you how they caught him. Um, the only thing that kind of gets me on that that is it sort of mirrors the end of this movie when you've got Michael surrounded by a mob of people ready to beat him down and take him out. Like, and you see Michael has no problem dispatching this entire group of people in this mob that are out to get him. He had oh, the yeah. same thing with all these cops in 78. Like why couldn't Michael have just went nuts and took them out too? Me and you get ourselves into trouble about analyzing movies and trying to figure them out before they're over. And now we're sitting here talking about it and I'm starting to wonder if they're going to tie all this together like that, that there's something to do. Like, cause uh, Lori's Lori character said you blunt force, blunt force will not stop him. Right. You know, our brute force will not stop him. So I'm kind of like, that kind of what happened. Yeah. Is that the cops laid off and he went quietly, mm -hmm. but the crowd kept on him about the shooting. And then he got up and he said, fuck y'all. I'm going to kill. I mean, he killed like eight people. Yeah. Quick, but the last thing I want to touch on, as far as the deaths in this movie, and and one thing I found pretty, I don't know, if clever is the word, but, um, you know, I I did not like Cameron's character, um, Allison's boyfriend in the first movie. Well, he was a dick. He was cheating on his girlfriend. Well, no, so. I mean, there's a lot of things there that you can unpack. Honestly, like he wasn't cheating on her. He got kissed by a girl. It was a misunderstanding, but he acted like a dude about it. Like he, he didn't explain this as a situation. It was kind of a bad scenario, but like he wasn't doing anything wrong. If you go back and watch that scene in context, he doesn't come on to that girl. That girl comes on to him and he pushes her away. Um, there's just a big misunderstanding there. That whole yeah. scene in, in 2018 is really just an, uh, a catalyst to get Allison without a phone. And in, in all of that, you get the repercussions of Oscar's death. They show you Oscar hanging on that gate from the first movie Oh, dude! Then you got the part with the mob, and his the mom, his mom shows up looking for him, and then she sees him in the morgue. Yeah, with a toe tag, dude. That's that's heartbreaking to see your right. dead son just again, right there. Yeah, again, like the weight of things, and then you know, uh, I see the relationship that Lonnie and Cameron have in this movie. Like, he's worried about his son. He goes after him, and they have a good relationship throughout the entire movie. Yeah. And then in the end, when they get to the Myers house and start discovering bodies, Lonnie Lonnie ends up dead. And then you've got Cameron and Allison trying to go after Michael. Cameron's death was a little bit heavy on me too, because Dude, it's brutal. He, he, he kind of redeemed himself in this one. And the, 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 yeah, the death is so fucking brutal that I like, it goes on for a good minute. Dude, this, the shoving his head, like beating his head there. And then he puts it into the freaking, uh, like the stairwell, uh -huh. uh, the banisters, uh, yep. banister, it just starts slamming his head. They're like, I was honestly waiting for his head to come off. Yeah. But then the added coming down the stairs and he stops and looks over and then just decides to put that finishing crack yeah, of the he, neck. He, yeah, he turns his head in basically 180 degrees the wrong direction. <laughs> and I, I genuinely thought they were going to kill Allison off there at the end too. Like, well, right? she fell down the stairs, broke her leg. Looks like, mm -hmm. uh, but all, and speaking of that, I love that shot. Again, Michael at the top of the stairs shot. Call back to yep. the old movies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love that because I was like, when she fell down the stairs and looked up, and I went, they're going to do it. Yep. And they did. He, he even stopped at the top of the stairs. Mm -hmm. Great shot. Dude, she stabbed him like three times with a yeah. big-ass damn butcher knife mm -hmm. that she pulled out of little John. Yep. And she got some stabs in on him. So, therefore, he's been stabbed there, too. So, I need to go back and count how many times Michael is shot and stabbed in this movie. It's quite a bit. He takes yeah. he takes some fucking damage in this movie yeah. and just keeps on going. Like, if if you thought him getting shot six times in that first movie was something, no. He gets, he gets put through the ringer. I mean, we're not even talking about what happens to him in the 2018 version. Just this movie. Yeah. He this, gets I mean, so much <laughs> it's like every time you turn around, somebody stabbing him, shooting him, whatever, you know, trying yeah. to burn him. He should have died, died, died from smoke inhalation 
at the house. Right. <laughs> I mean, hello, what kind of chemicals are in that house? You and know? he's wearing a mask, so he can't breathe very well anyway. <laughs> exactly. There's no N95 COVID mask underneath this thing. It's not filtering out shit. <laughs> so so it, it's not COVID proper. So yeah. it ain't helping him. I like the, the thing where she steals his mask. Right. They're really and, playing into that. Like it's going to boil down to something to do with the mask in the end of this. It's got to. They've they've played it up so much in these two movies. It's the trigger. It's the the, the power. I don't know what they're going to go with this. Yeah. But but I love that scene where he is walking for like like a tiger or a lion. Give me yeah. my fucking mask back. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's walking there chasing me, which we kind of know that she leads him over to the angry mob. But they give it back to him. Well, I don't know if they <laughs> give it back. They just leave it there as a, you know, that's just bait for him. Yeah. So and then, Yeah. Well, I mean, but the thing is, they could have held on to it. Don't don't give him his mask back. Yeah. You know, because that's obviously something. That's why she took it off to begin with. It makes you wonder if they would have just left his mask off of him and not given it back. Had they, would they have been able to take him out then? Like. Yeah, but, well, he just stood there. He was. Like well, in a catatonic mm, state. Catatonic state. I don't like know. Just, the, the only thing that doesn't make, I was going to say like the only time he's really getting crazy is when he's got this mask on, but he, he takes, he, he kills like the people in the gas station, station. and the podcasters and all that shit without a mask on in the first movie. So, so yeah, I, I'm wondering what they're doing. If it's something to do with the mask, it's something to do with, I don't know, something just like you said, the obsession yeah. with something. And then maybe it's Michael's obsession with the mask and this overall Halloween. You never know. Yeah. Because, I mean, I just, it goes back to that first kill he made back in 1954 or whatever it was. Uh, you know, he puts that clown mask on and then proceeds to kill. You know, obviously there was a driving force there that led him to put the mask on and kill his sister. But I don't know. It's something something they've they've put out there for me that I keep thinking about. That's ultimately the detractor for this series for me is how they're trying to interject comedy. And... Yeah. You know, comedy's fine. There's comedy. There's comedy in 78 Halloween, but it's subtle. It's really subtle. It's like, you know, totally. She says totally so many times. Like, that shit's fucking funny. Totally. (laughs) And, like, the speed kills stuff. Hey, jerk. Speed kills. I, I will say I feel like the comedy in this one is a little more subtle than it is in the 2018, but... And this one, you've got the terrible dialogue that's pulling me out of it with the fucking evil dies tonight and all that stuff. Evil dies tonight! I mean, it's all you hear for like 15 minutes. It's evil dies tonight! Evil yeah. dies tonight! Evil dies tonight! I was like, oh my God. Evil dies tonight! This movie needs to die right now. But luckily, we get a little redemption at the end. So yeah. I, I kind of like a lot of the stuff that happens at the end with uh, Michael <laughs> killing Tom. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite part of the end of this movie is he fucking kills tommy i mean I, I wish he would have told took old huckleberry and shoved up his ass that would have been even better that would have been i mean the that's best really part. the that's really the most the saddest part of this movie is they turn tommy into a character that i don't like yeah. which is which is funny because i feel like lonnie would have been the easier character to do that too and they make you yeah. sympathetic with lonnie in this movie i i kind of like lonnie's character I yeah mean, you, like you said, you got the where he was picking on, and uh, Tom, well, he says that when he get up there to do the thing at the bar, he says, "I used to pick on this kid, yep. you know. But now he's like my best friend, and I like that." And I think even Lonnie's trying to make up for some of the stuff he did as a kid. And he's like, when they find out, and he, like you said, he gave out the guns, and they're all went around. He goes to the Myers house, yeah, uh, with his son and Allison to go take on Michael there. I mean, ultimately he dies and. In normal Michael fashion, he just sticks bodies in odd places, and Cameron yeah. has to find his dad shoved in the attic door. That's the only other thing I have with as far as the kills and some of the choices here is when Little John and Big John die, he fashions their bodies in the style of this picture that's on the mantle mm-hmm. and puts a record on. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, like, I we've seen Michael do his, you know, thespian dress up a scene thing with, with <laughs> fucking, with putting, uh, what's her face in the bed with Judith Myers tombstone and all that stuff. But like I've never seen Michael put on music for the mood. So that, that just seemed a little weird to me. 
he's walking around. He's like, oh, I, I, get, I need to cut back to him going through the record collection. Oh, that's, no, yeah. that's not good. Oh, 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 a little <laughs> oh, Ann Murray. Ann Murray. Yeah, I can fuck Ann with Ann Murray. <laughs> yeah, Ann Murray sounds good. I don't know. John Denver sounds good, too. I don't know. Let's go, uh, let's go with this. Well, so what do you think? Well, we've touched on a lot of this stuff in this movie. What, what are you thinking uh, out of uh, a five butcher knife rating? <laughs> well, what we give it, Josh? I mean, I... Think? I'll, I'll go with it like this. I watched it the first time. And after the first watch, I was perplexed. I was like, that was way better than I was expecting it to be. And then my second and third watch, I discovered things and kind of found things that I did like and didn't like. Ultimately, this Halloween kills makes Halloween 2018 a better movie for me. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a great sequel to 2018. Um, I'm, I like it. There are problems with it. Out of five butcher knives, I would give it a three and a half. Um, okay. You know, I I, I I definitely like where this movie goes and where it ends up. I just don't like some of what happens on the journey there. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it was me, uh, I probably, I, it's funny, like, and people make fun of us because we're whole chainsaw and Dave from summer school here. We share a brain. I was actually going to go three. Three? Yeah. I was going to give it three. I mean, I've only gave it a, a one watch. Maybe if I give it a couple more like you did, uh, maybe I'll find some better aspects of it and give it an extra half, but I don't think anything above three or three and a half at all. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's not perfect. It's not no. anywhere near the, the original it's, you know, I I'm fine with them doing a, a separate timeline, a back to the future, fucking separate timeline for Halloween. That's fine. It's the it Halloween should, multiverse. Yeah. I mean, it should, <laughs> it should be said that you and I are also big fans of the original Halloween too, where it's just a continuation of the same night, kind of like this one does. Um, so like, I don't, I don't dislike where that sequel went. Now it's the rest of the sequels in the Halloween franchise that I have problems with four and on yeah and i mean yeah. i even really I, I like aspects of part four i mean the mask is really the worst part of that oh movie god for me. I, the pissed off mime yeah but then after that it just goes so off the deep end with all the story and the backstory and the curse yeah. of thorn and all that stuff it's just yeah. like Ugh, curse of thorn the man in black blah, and you have blah, to blah. think dude like we've we've rebooted this series three times now because h2o technically was a reboot of the series yeah, because it's basically a sequel to the 1978 movie. Yeah. And, and then Resurrection is basically part three. Yeah. Yeah. And Resurrection yeah. is bottom of the barrel. Let the danger tainment begin now. Bottom of the fucking barrel of oh. Halloween movies. I will have to say, LL Cool J is a better actor than Buster Rhymes. This is serious. He's my biggest problem with H2O, to be completely yeah. honest. Ultimately, I'm I'm on board. I, I'm 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 excited to see Halloween ends and see where they take it from there. Could that ruin the entire thing for me? Probably. I yeah. mean, it probably could. But so far, I like where they're going with the. Let's just put it this way: I like where they're going with the story in this one. Mm-hmm. I I don't necessarily like some of the uh, stylistic choices or some of the dialogue and shit like that. I feel like they toned down the stuff I had problems with in 2018 in this one, but there's still problems with it for me. Yeah. I just, I, I mean, I know Mr. Green is directing these movies, but they really need to get a, who, whoever actually does a lot of the script writing and fix some problems with dialogue in this movie. It doesn't, like you said, it doesn't flow well. It just seems like it's just read this line right yeah. now. And it doesn't, it's like, it's, it's out of context with even the care other characters that are in the room. Sometimes it's just yeah. like, this doesn't flow. It, it doesn't feel natural. It's not a natural conversation. Like me and you sitting here talking, it'd be less like us sitting here and there's a cue card here to my right. Telling me make fun of Josh right now and say this line, yeah. you know, it's, stu- it's not that there's parts of it. It's really the, the roller coaster ride of the killings, the overall brutality of Michael Myers. And this, like he said, it, it it's, it's amped to a 10. Yeah. Even from 1978, dude, it's, I mean, if you watch, I mean, we've said this many times in this episode, I mean, if it's just, he's pissed. They get Michael, right. They, they, dude. they understand Michael Myers as a character. I think where they have trouble is the other characters that they're responsible for coming up with. Exactly. 
because I mean, even Jamie Lee back in 1978, it was okay. I mean, it's okay. It's like one of uh, probably her first movie. I think she'd done some commercials or something. But I mean, her mom was Janet Lee, so she was in an acting family. But in this, it's just kind of like, like I said, it's kind of lazy. You yeah. know, even her stuff. I mean, the, the Tommy stuff's bad. That stuff. Uh, I like I said, I think some of the best is her daughter Karen. I think they're both really good here. I even like the arc that that that, that Allison has, where she's just like, "No, I'm not on board with this. I'm going after this guy along with everybody else." Um, it's easy for her to get caught up in that mob, um, but I mean, I I kind of like where she goes, and I like I like Karen. I like Judy Greer's character in this, and that's kind of why I was bummed out when she died at the end of it. Um, or did but, she? That's what I was about to get to is we or thought, did she? We thought that some people were dead in the last one and they weren't. So who knows where they're going to go with it? But they say, you know, if the, I can see an opening scene of the next movie. They're telling Lori that her daughter died, blah, blah, blah. And then they're rolling her in. This one's got a pulse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and ultimately, like I say, they could ruin it for me. Like that might ruin it for me because yeah. I feel like losing Karen could be what drives this to the end yeah, i think if a, you i think if you renege on that and you make her survive it changes things it doesn't it doesn't make sense in in, in the way they're trying to tell this story for me it uh it's more substance yeah. to it if, if, that she's actually dead and probably better just to keep her dead like i said even though she did some of the best acting in this movie yeah other than michael <laughs> who has no lines in the movie just kills everybody yeah james but, Jude courtney is the mvp of this movie for damn sure he does a great job even when the the no mask and everything he, it just looks good i mean he's he's an old man now yeah i mean that was the I other mean, thing that was kind of weird about the 2018 movie was you got to see michael without his mask on a lot and you didn't really see that at all in the original halloween you got but, that little glimpse right before uh when he's attacking uh Lori and she peels it off of him uh-huh that's about it but and, and you know again there's there's continuity there too i mean all the damage that's been inflicted to michael over the past 40 years shows like they went through the trouble of making him not have have a a, a bunk eye they had the the stab wound in his in neck and neck. all of that stuff like they they're really i think i think they're they're doing it right where they need to but I think where, like I like I said, where they're left to their own devices on things, is where they're losing me a little bit. Yeah. So I I shall concur, doctor. But just, well, that's I mean I think we covered everything. I mean we got yeah. brutal killings. Uh, people die that mm -hmm. we didn't think would die, and people were still alive that I kind of thought would die. Yeah. And ultimately, if if Lori ends up dying in the end of all of this, I'm I'm probably okay with that. I, it'll be interesting to see where they go. But you know, some people I've seen were saying they expected Lori to die in this one, and I really didn't. I you know, if they're going to kill Lori off, it's going to be in the last movie. I, that's just yeah. wouldn't be smart to do that in this movie, in my opinion. I, I think I think I think the right Strode died in this movie if she is actually dead. Yeah, we 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 shall see. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I overall enjoyed it. Um, yeah, enjoyed it enough to watch it three times. I'll probably end up watching it again before I <laughs> cancel my Peacock subscription. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, I, I, I'm, I was a fan of this movie. I mean, there's things I don't like about it, but I was ultimately a fan of it. So, but like I said, I'll have to make it to the theater, give it a good theatrical watch, some yeah. popcorn and a soda take it in like it's meant to be taken in so. but for any of you guys out there that have been listening or watching us uh tell us what you thought about halloween kills what did you like what did you dislike about it we'd love to hear your opinions and uh kind of talk with you over the social media you can hit us up on facebook instagram tiktok twitter all that good stuff at vhs files podcast you can check out our youtube channel it's the vhs files on youtube and we also have a second youtube channel just for our long form podcast it's vhs files podcast on youtube and that'll do it for our conversation here about halloween kills we will be back with another episode for you some other time and until then be kind rewind, rewind. <laughs> evil dies tonight tonight been listening to the VHS Files podcast. 
Watch a few movies, take a few notes. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and drop us a rating and a review wherever you get your podcast. It was fun. <laughs> Send your questions, comments, and movie suggestions to VHS Files Podcast at gmail.com. I sing fucks using one too many movies. Don't you blame the movies? Follow us on all social media outlets at VHS Files Podcast. Movies don't create psychos. Check out our YouTube channel for more content. Movies make psychos more creative. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Evil dies tonight. <laughs> Every time Tommy says that. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting that knife a little close to your face there. <laughs> it looks like it is, dude. It's the camera angle. Look, see? I'm good. <laughs>